Yugas by A. J. Vosberg, published by the Path Magazine by the Theosophical Society in January 1896. In reading theosophical literature, one is often confronted by the words Maha Yuga, Kali Yuga, Manvantara, Kalpa, etc. No doubt all of the older members of the Theosophical Society are perfectly familiar with the words and their meaning, but it may be of help to recent members or to those who have not had time or opportunity to dig down into ancient Eastern chronology to see the principal points clearly set forth. It has been taught that there was no true understanding of the stellar or solar system until the time of Copernicus, some 400 years ago, but to any student it is evident he built his system upon the Pythagorean school of 2,000 years before. The Chinese have some astronomical annals which they claim go back about 3,000 years BC. They do not record much but comets and eclipses, and many of the predictions of the latter cannot be verified by modern calculations. The Egyptians taught astronomy to the Greeks, and they no doubt had very close knowledge of the solar system. Their year was 365 days with methods of correcting. Although they have left of no observations, the north and the south position of the pyramids has led to a supposition that the Egyptians used them for astronomical purposes. The zodiac of Dendara is one of their relics, and it is worth noting that upon the equinoctial points are in the sign of Leo. If it was constructed at that time, it would carry us back nearly 10,000 years. The Chaldeans, according to Diodorus, had long observed the motion of the heavenly bodies, as well as the eclipses. They had metonic period, or a cycle of 19 years. Also three other astronomical cycles, the Saros, 3,600 years, and the Neros, 600, and the Sosos, of 60 years. Simplicius and Porphyry relate that a series of eclipses preserved at Babylon were transmitted by Alexander to Aristotle and contained the observations of 1,903 years leading the con of Babylon by the Macedonians, who crude sufficient to enable Haley to discover the acceleration of the moon's mean motion. There have also been discovered in the ruins of Palenque among the Toltecs and the Aztecs, plan spheres, on of one of which inscribed symbolical figures corresponding nearly to the signs on the Chinese plain spheres, quote, that the name of the first day is also the name of water, and that the symbol consists of undulating lines similar to that of the Aquarius in the Egyptian and the Greek zodiacs, end quote. The Hindus have possessed astronomical knowledge for thousands of years, and their calculations today are found to be singularly correct. The question in regard to them is whether an astronomical system of advanced character, which certainly was found among them, is as old as they assert it to be. It is claimed that they may have obtained the knowledge from the Arabians or the Egyptians, but on the other hand, the remarkable correctness of their tables and the known character of the people in question, whose advances in mathematics cannot be doubted, and whose habits have throughout recorded history induced them to repel all connection with foreigners, are urged in favor of the originality of their system. We have their calendars annexed to the Vedas, which date back accordingly to Colebrook, 1400 B.C. They include a solar year of 365 days and are so composed as to determine it correctly. The zodiac of Verapetta and that described by Sri Peti in the Sanskrit are believed to be older than the Dendara. The quote, bones of Ney Pierre, an ingenious instrument used in making long calculations before the discovery of logarithms, was used in a slightly different form by the Hindus long before. As with nations of the present, the Hindus referred to two principal meridians, Lanka and 
Rame Swaram. Lanka is supposed to have been an island, no longer existing, under the equator, somewhat southwest of the island of Ceylon. It was one of the four cities, Yavakoti, Lanka, Bornakoti, and Siddharapuri, which are supposed to lie under the equator at 90 degrees distant from each other. Rameswaram is a small island situated between Ceylon and the continent of India at the entrance of Palk's Passage in the Straits of Manar. It is famous for its ancient pagoda and observatory. The meridian of Lanka is supposed to run through two other towns on the continent of India, Sanahita Saras and Avanti, currently U Ujjain or Ujjain, I think. The Sastras, or the Book of Laws, that quote, in the north, on the same meridian as Lanka, there are two other cities, Avante Rohitika, the mountain, and Sanahita Saras, which in former times were the seats of colleges and observatories. End quote. I mention these facts simply to show the possession by the Hindus from remote times of an extensive knowledge of mathematics and astronomy. We now come to the division of time. The Tamil solar year is sidereal, i.e. the space of time during which the sun departing from a star returns to it again. Their zodiac is divided into twelve signs or mansions, Nisha, Vrusha, Madhuna, etc., corresponding to our Aries, Taurus, Gemini, etc. Each solar month contains as many days and parts of days as the sun stays within each sign. They divide the year into six seasons, called Ritu in Sanskrit, of the two months each, the first of which, Chaitram, or Vashaka, corresponds to our April, and the Saran, or natural day, is the time included between two consecutive sun risings. The names of the days are as follows. Sunday, Ravi, the sun. Monday, Soma, the moon. Tuesday, Mangala, Mars. Wednesday, Buddha, Mercury. Thursday, Guru, Jupiter, and also Teacher's Day. Friday, Sukra, Venus. Saturday, Shani, Saturn. They also divided time in a number of cycles or yugas, the meaning of which has been interpreted in various ways. The most accepted holds that the word yug or yuga properly means the conjunction or opposition of one or more planets. It is generally used, however, to express long periods of years at the expiration of which certain phenomena occur. It is probably more particularly referred to as the revolution of Jupiter, one of whose years is about 12 of ours, five revolutions, or 60 years, being equal to a Brihasmati chakra, or cycle, which literally means the wheel of Jupiter. In this cycle, there are contained five other cycles of 12 years each. The names of these five cycles or yugas, though use of these yugs is prehistoric, at least to the outsiders, are as follows. 1. Samvatsara, presided over by Agni. 2. Parivatsara, presided over by Arya. 3. Iduratsara, presided over by Chandra. 4. Anuvatsara, presided over by Brahma. 5. Udratvatsara, presided over by Shiva. In each Mahayug, reckoning from the past, we have four lesser yugs, and they are the Satya Yug, or Golden Age, of 1,728,000 years, 
we have the Trete Yug or Silver Age of 1,296,000 years, the Dwapa Yug or the Brass or Brazen Age, 864,000 years, and the Kali Yug or the Iron Age of 432,000 years. So we see by calculating all of the dates that a Mahayug consists of 4,320,000 years. So the sun would perform 4,320,000 Baghanas or sidereal revolutions in a Mahayug. There are also aeons or librations of equinoctial points, of which there are 600 in a Mahayug. The Kalpa consists of a thousand Mahayugs or 4,320,000,000 years, which Kalpa is also called a quote, day of Brahma, end quote. In making up the Kalpa, we have first a twilight or a Sanhya, equal to the Satya Yug of 1,728,000 years. Second, 14 Manvantaras of 308,448,000 years each, all of which together make up the Kalpa. Each Manvantara is presided over by a patriarch or a Manu, the names of which are omitted. We are living in the seventh Manvantara, of which 27 Mahayugs have passed. So if one desires to know exactly where he is along the, quote, pilgrimage of the ego, end quote, the following scheme will place him. Sandhi, or Twilight of Kalpa, 1,728,000 years. Six Manvantaras, 1,850,688,000 years. 27 Mahayugs, 116,640,000 years. Asata Yug to Sandi, 1,728,000 years. Atrita Yug, 1,296,000 years. Adwapara Yug, 864,000 years. And of the Kali Yug, um, as of when this was written, up to April 11th, 1895, 4,997 years. The beginning of the Kalpa was the time when planetary motion began. Of this time, 17,064,000 years were spent or employed in creation, at the end of which man appeared. It will be seen that the first 5,000 years of our Kali Yug will expire April 11th, 1898. Do we look for any manifestations? End of article. If you were wondering why you saw the random nines popping up on your screen, it's because as I read this article, um, I noticed a pattern reoccurring within the amounts of time um, that were given in the, in, in the yugas, and then the total amount of all of the yugas and manvantaras added up all together. Um, each one of those, all of the calculations, equal an end result of the number nine in numerology. I was blown away. And um, probably a reason that I pushed to create this video and um, have it premiere today is because today, April 11th, uh, marks the 126 years, which again is a nine, from that 5,000 year anniversary that they quoted, April 11th, 1898. So here we are, my brothers and my sisters, already 5,126 years of our current yuga, or our Iron Age, has been completed. And now we only have 426,874 years to go until mankind reaches our new and next golden age. 
It might sound like um, a very far, far uh, distant thing to think about, but in macro terms, that's honestly right around the corner, my friends. So, in this uh, carnation, let's learn as much as we can, let's grow as much as we can, and let's love as much as we can. Until the next time, love yourself and love each other unconditionally.